Drive is when good, so. Ah, oh, we delayed again the shutdown until February 18th. But Roe v. Wade is still about to be overturned. And uh, so people are now trying to argue that there were certain Supreme Court justices who may have lied to Congress under oath. Of course they did. But they're in now. Who's going to stop them? You knew that was the danger. <clears throat> you knew that was their intention. That's why they were purposely selected for Trump to choose. And the Senate just, yep, and the whole fiasco about the Kavanaugh one, dear God, Senator Hatch from Utah, the Mormon, oh, she's very pleasing to the eyes, dear God, yes, humiliate the church and Mormons, good job, worse than Flake, who flaked, was confronted in the elevator, wanted to get away from her, so she he just told her whatever she wanted to hear, and uh, delayed it with the, oh, maybe we should hear her, and then votes against her, puts Kavanaugh in, what a flake, <clears throat> and I've gone over with you every once in a while when it bring, comes up, because it's not a Mormon topic, to expose the church with, per se, but uh, <clears throat> the argument is not against or with pro-choice versus pro-life. People have been brainwashed and suckered into the dichotomous argument that is fallacious. <clears throat> as I see in the news from the conservative side that science proves Roe v. Wade is wrong. <laughs> science doesn't prove that, dumbass. But yeah, people get desperate when their position is in jeopardy, and so they lie. As I told you, it's about the cause of wow, how the woman got pregnant. It has nothing to do with the argument after the woman's already gotten pregnant. Conservatives, the pro-lifers, want to ignore the primary cause of how the woman got pregnant and justify criminal action. Because everybody knows that Roe v. Wade has been precedent for so long because of that causal factor. And nobody dares, or previously has dared, to victimize the woman of rape. And yet, here we are, as it's about to be overturned because of religion. As Justice Sona, Sonia, Sonia, I can't pronounce her name, I have to see it, <clears throat> had said that this is a religious debate, plain and simple. And it's not supposed to be in our courts and in our governments and in our laws. Religion is supposed to be separate from the state. And so, isn't it interesting that pro-lifers want to harm the life of the woman who's the victim of rape and claim that they're pro-life? You know, you're pro-crime. That's what you are. Plain and simple. If a woman doesn't want to keep the rape baby, she should not keep the rape baby, but she should not be forced to have it. And the court should not be delaying decisions by abusive prosecutions tampering with the courts to punish the woman. 
all this needs to stop. And it won't. It's just going to get worse. Women will be put into slavery. So, the church side of it. The uh, Mormons, as well as church leaders, have no understanding of what Matthew chapter 5, and thus 3 Nephi 12, is talking about concerning divorce. <clears throat> I myself have wondered what it meant growing up, and uh, I tried to explain it to my second ex, because that was of her big concern, because she was divorced, and she then got our marriage annulled, and so she's kind of concerned about her status with Jesus because of it. And it doesn't help that the church has, in the past, punished Mormons who get divorced, blaming both sides, even if the responsibility is on one side only. But of course, that person who's guilty will love to drag down the other person and blame them too. But uh, well, I told you when I was in the younger singles ward, the uh, young women told me to stick with my own kind after the first divorce that she got up in Canada. I was sort of left out of that decision. <clears throat> Nonetheless, I'm now the bad guy. Therefore, I should be punished like a victim of rape. Financially, and, uh, emotionally, and socially, and legally, etc., etc., etc. So, camera problems today. <laughs> and so, the church actually used to uh, uh, punish Mormons who get divorced. Uh, I can't recall offhand, though I've heard, and so it's just hearsay, so it could be Mormon myth, but with what I've learned, it may actually be true, or based on truth, that Mormons were excommunicated if they got divorced. And so I think with the rise in divorces, and certain persons getting divorced, I think that was put a stop to. Brigham Young had numerous divorces and put in section 132 blaming Joseph for it, fraudulently putting his name to it, because of the uh, latest divorce that had him locked up in jail. <laughs> so you can see the motivation for creating section 132 and giving the death threat to Emma? Really? Joseph? As Emma never divorced him, she was stuck by his side the whole time. And Joseph was faithful, despite what Brigham and his Danites tried to accuse him of. And practicing in secret, they were doing it in secret. I've exposed that for you. And so, yeah, the church has also been found guilty of atrocious laws of banning interracial marriage, and so on and so forth. But let's focus on the scripture and explain it for you, so you can put it to rest, because you're going to believe me, right? I'm an expert in the field, I'm educated, trained, experienced, I know the answer, so you're going to believe me, right? You're not going to be stuck in your spiritual witness that you already have concluded. God gave me a spiritual witness, and my spiritual witness came from God. God gave me a spiritual witness, because my spiritual witness came from God. <clears throat> it's called.
called the fallacy. Trained and educated, not only in the ancient world, but also on theory development and testing for confirmation, using sound argument rather than fallacy argument. So he starts off, Behold, it is written by them of old time. Really? Of them? I thought it was the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not commit adultery. What you are witnessing with Matthew, which was just copied right into the Book of Mormon, <coughs> is uh, a, a linguistic tell that the Ten Commandments had not been formulated yet. The author of Matthew? The Ten Commandments not formulated yet? You mean the Torah had not been written yet? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. But we're not talking about that, we're explaining a divorce for you. <laughs> the uh, old time was the Egyptians, where uh, the 42 affirmations in your judgment <clears throat> at the scales of Ma'at were made testing your heart, your inward self, because anybody can claim outwardly that they're being obedient, but it was designed for a person to introspect, view introspectively, to purify their heart. And so, uh, then comes the part of uh, well, that thou shalt not commit adultery. And I, I'm kind of confused. I, I think there's been a few who've caught on. But uh, there's the one of the Ten Commandments of thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. That's what this following passage is referring to in verse 28. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman, to lust after her. And so, because of our current moral society, as religion has completely changed from the origins of Scripture, even in Joseph Smith's time, things have changed in Mormonism that did not exist back then. <coughs> and... And it's wrong for us to interpret scripture according to our current moral position. You have to do your research to find out their moral position and their cultural practices to have a greater understanding of what is being discussed and talked about. And so the first word we need to explain is Whoa, man. Comes from the caveman era days when he first saw a female. <laughs> Isn't that correct? <laughs> you now trust me now, right? <laughs> you can't take a joke. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> if you're going to assume that female is to be the interpretation, you're wrong. It's a specific female. Like I said already, it's a, a female who has been contractually bound to a man. If you're unfamiliar, the time period of when this was written was during the times, and it like the 1900s when it was finally reversed in America. Women were 
property to their husbands. Men would buy their wife. And so the woman was a slave to her husband, a sex slave, specifically. <clears throat> and so this is concerning the laws of treatment of female property. And as much as that's atrocious to us, and it is, this was not the an egregious thing back then. This was the law. And so if you try to impose, as I uh, saw Jungle Cruise the other day, you know, Disney's trying to be hip with the modern times to show that pants can be a strong force through anachronism. And as much as it was entertaining for the movie, you can't impose that back in that day. <clears throat> you know, that's where the statements come that a woman needs to learn her place, and that a woman should keep silent. Thank you, redactor of the author of Paul. And, and so, virgins women who have not had children are not included here. Plain and simple. This is only women, females, who have had babies, who are property to another man. And so for you, as a man, to desire somebody else's property, uh, that's coveting. And if you have sex with her, you've caused her to commit adultery. And here they're trying to say that you have committed adultery, <clears throat> as you are the one who already has a wife. And so he's trying to say if you're coveting, you've already committed adultery in your heart. You've coveted. Your heart is not pure. Or the Egyptian judgment. <clears throat> and so then we skip down to the divorce part in verse 31. It has been written that whosoever shall put away his wife, so a married man who has his property, the woman, If he's going to put her away, he has to legally do so. That's what this means. You had a contractual purchase agreement, and if you're just going to get rid of her, you need to give her a written divorce decree. A contractual divorce. Because... You cause her to commit adultery if you do not give her a divorce, if she goes and has sex. But there's this word in 32, and it's a fun word, and everybody screws it up. <laughs> fairly, fairly, I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for, which means except or not including the cause of fornication. The prophets of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints have wrongly translated this as virgin sex. unmarried couples having sex. And as the debate with pro-life versus pro-choice 
is confused as the porn industry just loves it. Great, you're going to screw up the definitions of words and the translations? Awesome. Thanks for the billions, guys. <laughs> we'll help you in causing this confusion. <laughs> Again, what is it talking about? It's a woman who's had children, and you're now divorcing her. And so, except for the cause of fornication? Virgin sex? <laughs> Not the case. <clears throat> and it's actual porn. That's the Greek word that's put into the Greek text. The P and the F are phonetically the same, so it's pornication can also be pronounced. And again, because of the Latin-based languages throughout Europe, everybody wants to go their own way on how to pronounce things. So that's also caused confusion. <coughs> As uh, Jesus, is also Joshua, is also Yahweh, is also uh, Jesus. And it's interesting that that white people will never dare name their child Jesus. They have no problem with Joshua. It's the same name. But Hispanic, Spanish speaking, uh, have no problem calling their child Jesus. What's up with that? What's up with that? What's up with that? <coughs> and, and so what is this? Because except for the cause of porn, the wife being put away is committing adultery. <laughs> Without a divorce. So does that mean that if you pimp out your wife for Playboy, that's okay? See how screwed up you can get when you don't accurately know things? <laughs> I don't want to get a divorce, dear, but I, I don't I, I don't want you around anymore, so I'm 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 selling you to Playboy. <laughs> Hugh's making me a great offer. And uh, he's dead now, isn't he? Yeah. So, porn. It comes from prostitute. And again, people have screwed that one up too. <coughs> again, you got to realize the time period of when this was written. The Greeks began the practice of having women work in the temples as sacral prostitutes. And to call those temple workers as prostitutes is kind of a slang term back in those days. It was kind of a mocking joke because they would stand outside of the temple next to, in front of, the statues of the temple. Thus, prostitute, pro, means before. Statute, statue. Before the statue. <coughs> the original word was neutral. It had nothing to do with sex. Because our current edition of the word graphy, pornography, graph is an art form. You know, any kind of art. And yes, women have been the greatest of inspiration for the greatest works of art. <coughs> but that's a modern definition, a modern creation of two Greek words. 
And so a museum, an art museum, is a pornography, pornographium, something like that. It doesn't exist because evangelicals created the word. <clears throat> and so what it's talking about here, as is becoming more clear, the doctrine of Christ is a little bit different than Christians believe and is why they shouldn't have excluded from their canon of the New Testament the birth of Mary. <clears throat> See, what it's saying here is that if you're not going to divorce your wife, you can give her to the temple to be a sacral prostitute. And she's not committing adultery anymore. <clears throat> Plain and simple. But if another man takes her to be his wife without a legal document, because she can't get married if she's not divorced, they all hit the guy, original guy's property. And so this is the only exception to allow a woman to escape adultery. is giving her to the temple. And so, yes, you've got your Old Testament stories. Samuel. Uh, his mother uh, struggled to have a child. And so she prayed to God and said, If you give me a son, I'll give him away to the temple. <laughs> she had a son, the name of God, and gave him to Eli. And uh, that tells us it was written during the Roman period. <clears throat> because the sons were sacral prostitutes. The Lord is angry with Eli because his two sons had sex in the wrong room of the temple. Oops. And so, yeah. There's a dual thing for you there. I'm giving you the date of when the Old Testament was written. Or that that uh, book of Kings was written <coughs> as uh, archaeologists cannot find records of the kings of Israel and Judah past certain people during the pre-attack by Neo-Assyria. <coughs> they can't tie it to David. They can't find David in the archaeological record. They can't find Solomon. They can't find those two, Rehoboam and Jeroboam, and several down until a certain point. And yet they still think that, well, you know, absence of evidence is not proof that it didn't happen. Yeah, that's correct. But it doesn't mean you have to keep looking for the rest of your life in just Jerusalem or Shechem for those guys. You need to branch out. Expand your theory test. And as I've gone over with you, oh look, there they are. Egypt! The David Moses dynasty. What do you know? But anyway, I digress again, don't I? The uh, Greeks started sacral prostitution not because they're evil but because of the original uh, temple practice of marrying in the temple uh, the uh, pharaohs and then the Assyrians picked it up the Mesopotamians and for uh, the new king for example he'd have to get married can't get married at the wedding supper feast of the Lamb of the last days. 
without a wife, otherwise he can't be Pharaoh. He has to get married. <coughs> and uh, there would be a big ceremony, wedding feast, and a coronation with uh, his bride as well. And so the temple had a room set aside for wedding sex after the wedding was performed so that they can conceive immediately to symbolize the birth of the successor to the throne. And depending on which pharaoh and which dynasty and, and then Samaria depending on their practice you know, the, the cultural traditions change over millennia and century and decade. But uh, eventually the Greeks started the practice of temple prostitutes <coughs> for that uh, original purpose and intent and uh, for the symbolism of creation stories and all that. So it's not as bad and evil as people take it to be, but uh, it, it, yeah, it strayed obviously. But we can't impose our morality on them. So, Sodom and Gomorrah, yeah, that's also Roman period, because the guys are saying, hey, we want to worship the, with these guys in our temple. Had nothing to do with homosexuality. It was temple prostitution during the Roman period. And that's why Lot said, hey, here's my daughters. And they refused. <clears throat> so that explains that one for you. And uh, I, <clears throat> and and so there's no laws, moral laws, to prevent two people from having sex as long as somebody doesn't get pregnant. It's all fun and games until somebody gets pregnant. And that's the whole point of scripture, is that uh, rape is when a woman gets pregnant. And so the laws of Hammurabi from uh, Assyria were designed to protect women by making rules saying that if a woman cries rape within the walls of the city, she is protected by the law. But if she steps outside the walls of the city all by herself, she can't claim rape. And that's how he tried to protect women in that particular instance. Uh, so the woman at the well with Jesus, that was kind of a risky thing. She'd been married multiple times and had been divorced multiple times. But she had been given a writing of divorcement. But she was committing adultery because... Uh, well, let's see. Uh, yeah. Yeah, whoso marrieth her who is divorced committeth adultery. because she's had children. You can't take some other guy's children, even though he is divorced to the property. She's... that's the bad part about those days, is that once a woman has had children, her life is pretty much predetermined after that. And she can only become a temple worker if she's going to have sex again. So you can see how women have been greatly liberated and freed of their oppression and bondage. And what we're about to witness is all of that being taken away again. Isn't that great, women? Don't you want to be a part of the church now? 
Nelson's planning on polygamy for the millennium. Changed the law of chastity already. Are you sure you want to be Mormon? A female Mormon. Are you sure you want to go through this? Are you sure you want to be called property? Are you sure you want to go back to being silent in church? Remember, Nelson tried to silence women by taking away their conference session. See, it was him who took away their conference session and merging it with general conference. Because Monson included the women's session with conference that final time. But then Nelson took it away and merged it with the October conference. And then he tried to take it away from you in this year. So you can already see where his heart is towards women, despite having all those girls and one boy. As he's also a polygamist. Legal polygamy. She died first, assuming she died of natural causes. <clears throat> but because I know him now, I have to suspect him for any kind of thing now. But again, I'm experienced and educated on how to develop a theory and test it. And so I can't do that with Nelson unless I get him to tell the truth about his life, get access to the medical records. <laughs> so that's not likely to happen, is it? And so I have to drop such a claim. <clears throat> but uh, I, I, it makes no sense to me as I cry out for Mormon women to listen, begging them to listen, warning. I've tried it with blacks, warning you, please listen to me. The church is not giving up their racism. Yes, they use the NAACP as a front to cover up their racism. They were exposed. They thought they were doing this big old song and pony and dance thing or whatever giving ten million dollars to educate blacks and then the next day Bezos's ex gives billions to help <laughs> so yeah the church can't do anything good they just keep getting exposed for their crimes and the intentions of their heart and it's gonna get worse if they are not stopped and punished for their crimes. And if the laws keep getting changed to oppress us, taking away Roe v. Wade, you know, denying us the right to vote, that's already happened by the Supreme Court. MAGA can now overturn elections just because they don't like the results. gonna get worse guys I keep warning nobody wants to believe and so I, I tried to tell the second X no this is a different time culture we don't have anything other than what the church tells us and it's based on an incorrect understanding of the scriptures to justify all this and that but currently for the moment divorced women are okay so Marie Osmond even though it's she's on her first back to her first which is number eight or something like that who knows how many dozens of men she's been through they're God set an example for Mormons everybody's having fun but me I had two though so that's more fun than others if you want to call it fun. I still... Uh, uh, is it K? Was that his name on Men in Black? Where uh, uh, Jay catches him 
on the internet, spying on on his, on his his love with the satellite. And, uh, so Jay throws out the fallacy of it's better to have loved and lost than to have never have loved at all. And he responds with, try it. And with that, I close.